Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, what I'm going to do is edit an image I took using the Canon RF 100 to 400. And as you can see here, I shot this at 12,800 ISO with one 500th of a second at F8. Now, if you look at the image, and I don't know how well this is coming through on YouTube, it doesn't look bad to me. It looks like a really well exposed image. Um, and we can even come over to our levels and you can see I have some blown out highlights here, but overall it's a pretty well exposed image. A lot of people who are talking about the Canon 100 to 400 5.6 to F8, they're concerned about the aperture or the fastest aperture of it being F8. Now, obviously this photo here was shot in a pretty well lit situation. So even though I was using 12,800 ISO, you're going to have a different outcome if you are shooting in, let's say a concert hall and you have to shoot 12,800 ISO. The ambient light is not going to be greater than the natural light that I was shooting this in, which is why I get a cleaner image. Now, I will note that I also shot this on the Canon EOS R6, which only has a 20 megapixel full frame sensor. Without getting too deep into the technical aspect, because there's lower megapixels on a full frame sensor, that means the space to capture light is larger. So it's going to gather more light and it's gonna work better. This is the reason why full frame lower megapixel sensors are usually referred to as great low light cameras. All of that said, how do you edit a photo inside of On One with a lot of digital noise or something that was shot at a higher ISO? The first thing that you should do, and I would recommend you do this before you edit the image overall, is scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on noise and sharpening. This is gonna give you two options. Now, if you are on Photo Raw 2022 and beyond, you should just use no noise. This is a raw image straight out of camera. No processing has been done to this image yet. Now, if you look on the left side here, you can see that there's a ton of noise. Now, if you look at the squirrel in the image, you can see I'm retaining a lot of detail. So let's figure out how no noise is really working this. Now with the new version of 22.5, we have some better updates with no noise. And we have the method option here. Now I can go with high detail. We're gonna see how on one processes this. And you know, you have to choose the one that's best for your image. I personally don't care for, at least on this image, I don't care for the high detail processing segment. Uh, now, when I'm zoomed out like this, it doesn't look too bad, but I prefer the original. If it were up to me, uh, I would use the original on this image just because I don't like what it's doing to the squirrel's fur here. Now, below this, you have your luminance, your enhanced details, and your color. Your luminance, just think of this of the amount slider for how much processing you want on one to do to remove noise. I'm going to bring more of this area here into the image. All right, because I want you to see the noise on the left here and then how it's reducing the noise over here on the right. So I'm going to pull this from 98%. I'm going to pull this down to 50%. All right, and then we'll let that go. And as you can see, I'm getting more noise back in the image. Now, because I don't care for this high detail, I'm gonna switch between the two. So I'm gonna to go to original. This is going to give a softer approach, essentially, to your digital noise, if you will. Again, use the one that is the best for you. The beauty of using on one, this is all non-destructive, so you can change it later on, even later on in the edit. Now, the enhanced detail, this is where you will bring back some of that detail. So uh, in the squirrel, obviously, if your background is blown out, 
you're not going to want to bring back detail in the background. So we're going to look at the squirrel for the detail that we're going to bring back. I'm going to increase this all the way up just so that way you can see what on one is doing. Now with the squirrel, if you look at how the squirrel's fur is just starting to become a little bit more defined, that's all this is doing. Now, if I pull this all the way to the left and we look at the squirrel's fur, it's probably extremely subtle on the YouTube based off of the compression, but the squirrel's fur got a little bit softer. Now, with your image, this may work a lot different. Um, so use it however it complements your image best. That's that's the best way that I can uh, refer to this. Now, I get asked often, what is the best balance between luminance and enhanced detail? And it's really hard to say because every image is going to be processed differently. But I would always recommend you put just enough luminance to reduce the overall noise and then enhance your details to bring back the details or whatever you consider important in the image that you lost because of the luminance. So in this image, I want to get rid of the background noise here. Now, I think this is actually a good amount compared to what it used to be. And you want to zoom in to 100% and then you also want to zoom out and I'm just going to drag this over. You also want to zoom out to see what it looks like uh, without being at 100% because this is how we view our image. Zooming into 100% just lets you see what's happening at the uh, pixel level. But when you are zoomed out and you're looking at it, how it would normally be viewed. And I would also add this image, I probably would not apply any noise correction or reduction if I were printing this because when it prints those uh, the noise is not going to really come through now if you're going to play this on a video or if you're going to put it on Instagram Facebook anything like that then you're probably going to want to reduce the noise just a little bit if you don't like noise in your image or if you're going for a more pristine look in your image. The best thing that I can say is reduce noise in a way that complements your photo editing style. Don't get rid of noise just because you shot at a high ISO. All right. Get rid of noise if it is the correct method of making your photo look the way that you want it to look. It's the best advice that I can give. Now, when it comes to the luminance, we'll pull the luminance slider over to the right and you'll see that it starts to make this look a little bit softer. Uh, I like to call it like the clean dreamy look, which I'm okay with. I like the way that 86 looks on this image. Now, if I felt like I was losing too much detail in this tree, then I would pull my detail slider up just until I start to get that detail back the way that I want it. Now, when you're zoomed in like this, to me, it doesn't look very good. All right. Uh, the only benefit, to, and this is just my personal opinion. OK, take it for what it's worth. When you're zoomed in like this and you're looking at how each of these pixels is being manipulated, that's cool. However, the only benefit that you get out of this is knowing that when you go, like if I know that I want to apply more contrast to the image while I'm doing my edit, then it helps for me to see where my small and my fine details are, uh, because that's where that contrast is going to start to get applied to. So for me, however, I like to look at it all the way zoomed out. Uh, because this is how everyone's going to view the image and this is where I get my base. Again, take that for what it's worth. This is just my opinion. The last slider here is color. Now, I don't have any color noise. I'll zoom in on this side. Uh, I don't have any color noise that is so off-putting from the original image that I need to uh, correct for this. 
So leaving it at 100%, I think is fine. If I pull it all the way down, I don't think it does anything different than what was already there. So I'll leave that be. Now, the next section is actually really important because raw files don't really have sharpening. I'm sure some camera manufacturers, when they make their raw files, whatever their proprietary or proprietary algorithm is, they apply maybe a little bit of sharpening. But most raw files don't have sharpening. And if they do, it's a very small amount because the raw file essentially is just a unprocessed version. It's just a bunch of data, ones and zeros that make up the digital exposure of your image. And then you have to actually develop it. Uh, that's the one of the largest difference between a raw file and a JPEG. Now, with the sharpening here, based off of what you're going for in your image, you're going to want to increase that uh, to meet your need. All right. So if I pull this all the way down to zero in this one, I'll zoom in so it'll be a little bit easier to see. So this is sharpening at zero percent. Now, if I pull this all the way up, we'll just go to 89. You can see I'm starting to get those highlight details back and this could work well zoomed out this far away. Uh, my recommendation is you shouldn't pull this. I would not recommend pulling this beyond 35. The reason for that is you can add more sharpening when you get ready to print the image. But as you start to add effects, especially contrast, if you add too much sharpening, you're going to run into some issues with adding contrast. So my recommendation, just apply enough uh, to make you feel confident that you have a sharp image because raw files by default are a little soft, all right? So you just wanna add a little bit. Now, the detail and threshold, again, depending on how much noise you have in your image, I would recommend being careful with the way that you crank up your detail. And then as you pull the threshold, it's going to try and minimize uh, to just the darkest lines as things transition pixel wise. So as I pull it to the left, you can see that there's a lot of sharpening being applied to this overall image. As I pull the threshold over to the right, it's only going into particular areas of the image. All right. And that's what you're seeing on the screen. As I pull it to the left, there's a lot. As I pull it to the right, there's a little. And it's only going to very particular areas. This is essentially a masking tool. All right. So if you pull this up all the way and then you pull your threshold all the way to the left, look at how much sharpening is happening to the image. As I pull it to the right, I'm reducing that sharpening. It's the easiest way to explain the threshold. Now, again, I don't recommend you pull this above 35. I'm actually going to put this one at 30. I think 20 is usually pretty good, but that's very dependent upon your image and how it was shot. Now, when it comes to detail, my recommendation is to pull this up no more than 10 points higher than whatever your amount is. The reason for that, again, if you're gonna add uh, contrast later, it gives the perception of sharpness and you're gonna get back a lot of detail in your image. Once you have your settings for both your noise reduction and your sharpening applied to the image the way that you are feeling confident and, and comfortable, then click apply and it's going to lock those adjustments in for you. And now you can come up here and if you wanted to, you can hit AI auto and look at that. In one click, I got an image that I think I would be able to use quite well. Uh, you can come over here, mess around with your camera profiles and see if there's any that really work for you. I think Vivid looks kind of cool and I would just pull down on my AI auto maybe contrast it a little bit more and bring down the blacks and maybe my highlights uh 
and even the exposure just a touch maybe bring up the midtones all right if you found value in today's video smash the like button and if you got questions leave them in the comment section below and i will get back to you until the next time i want you to stay inspired and keep creating peace